I actually don't want to end it here. I ended it here, but I realized I wanted to ask a very basic question and just yeah. perhaps of a bl- breakout clip of the whole thing. This whole conversation seems to hover around testosterone. Uh, I remember famously on This American Life, they tested the journalists of public radio, the men, very low testosterone. What does testosterone afford you? What is this magical hormone? And uh, why are you know, why is it so important in not just athletics, but what does it do for one in life? Yeah. So, I mean, so both men and women have testosterone. It's really all about the dose. So there is certain dose that you have, uh, you know, there's, there's actually a big surge of it, uh, during, uh, in, in utero, uh, that is involved in sort of making your, 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 your brain organized around there. It is involved in, uh, androgenizing your genitals to create, you know, male typical appearing genitals. Um, and then we get another big surge of testosterone, at least males do, uh, in, uh, at the time right around puberty, maybe 12, 13 years old. Um, and this has, you know, has systemic effects on your body. It, it makes uh, you more aggressive and, and horny, and it makes you bigger, faster, stronger. It makes, uh, it changes the way your pores are, the way you sweat, the way you smell, the pheromones that you're releasing. Um it's 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 just a totally systemic thing. This is what we've evolved to do rather than, you know, evolving just pure genetic mechanisms for how we achieve sexual dimorphism. We've evolved uh, basically just a, 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 horm- a hormonal system that you just up levels of this and you can cause an individual to go through male puberty. You know, if you were to give a female, the, the, you know, the male puberty level dose of testosterone. Uh, this is going to cause them to very much appear like a biological male when they when they grow up. You can look at certain people who've done this to themselves, you know, trans men like Buck Angel, whatever. If you saw this person walking on the street, you would say this is just uh, this is clearly a dude. Um, yeah, so it's it's a totally uh, systemic effects on your bodies and both the way you behave, your your personalities, your behaviors, your sexuality. Uh, yeah, it's it is an incredibly strong and potent hormone yeah okay so man i know i said i was going to wrap this up but this is a very interesting topic because i guess it's something a little uncomfortable if it so radically alters your personality how do you feel about that i mean I, i feel like that could make people a little uncomfortable and lead to the sense that we don't have this intrinsic personality but all we are is a collection of chemicals if i can take a chemical and suddenly be a different guy what are the implications of that in your view yeah i mean we're we are a combination of of genetics and our environment so there are genetic aspects of personalities you know you can you can do twin studies and those types of things and look at what's the genetic component of these personality differences uh and but they're also definitely you know we are in a sense a slave to like a lot of our our hormones or hormones that our bodies are producing and its effect on our brains and our mood it's 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 massive, yeah. So uh, that's just sort of all baked in. This is, is what it means to be a human as you're growing through life and you're changing. And then as you get older, your testosterone lowers. You know, you're going through menopause as a woman. Your estrogen goes down, and you know your behavior changes through life. This is just part of the arc of of being uh, being a human, and it's it's just a wild ride. And um, yeah, I mean, I think we should em- embrace it and not really. You know, it's not a problem. It's not good. It's not not bad. It's just sort of the way things are, and uh, it's it's you know something we can anticipate and uh, incorporate and make sure that we're we're aware of what's going on. And if we have any sort of uh, defect that's causing any any sort of hormonal issues, we can correct them. But no, hormonal fluctuations are totally uh, totally natural. I would assume that my I've never been tested, but I would assume that my T level would be on the lower side. I am a, a, a journalist and this is just what happens. And I, I do a handshake and I feel my hand crushed. Uh, I remember growing up, it was just assumed that taking uh, steroids, taking testosterone uh, would have these incredibly negative externalities, roid rage, whatever. People are taking tea nowadays. Uh, what's your what's your view of that? Does that improve a man's health, or does it improve it up to a point at which point it creates all these problems? So, I mean, there's a lot of men who maybe in their 40s will go on hormone replacement uh, therapy just because you know your your testosterone sort of begins to fade after about 40 years old. I'm turning 40 soon. Um, 
<laughs> but besides that, uh, so it's there's one thing of you know bringing up your testosterone to a level that you've had before. This can make people feel more energetic. Um, it's not necessarily going to make you uh, crush it in the gym like you're the rock, you know, just on in, taking so much juice like you're a bodybuilder. Uh, you know, if you want to get the effects like you know male bodybuilders and things like that, you you're taking astronomical levels of of testosterone mm -hmm. um, that you know, has so many consequences for. Uh, your body's ability to keep producing testosterone since you're just injecting of so much of its own um, that has so many different effects on on your heart and on your brain and that type of thing. Um, so there's hormone replacements. One thing, um, just getting totally roided out to shred it in the gym is a whole other thing. There's also the whole like trans thing where we're giving you know uh, testosterone to to bodies that aren't even male to begin with and uh, just sort of sitting back and running this experiment, seeing how this is going to go and the effects that can have on, you know, their, their genitals and their uteruses. And, you know, these it's, uh, they, they tend to decay after a while and create a lot of health issues. So yeah, it's a uh, testosterone is no joke. <laughs> we shouldn't just be fiddling with it. We should definitely be informed whenever we do anything uh, messing with our hormones in our body for sure. Why does it, seem to have an impact on one's face a wider face a certain jawline what's with that um you know i've i've seen the the sort of the facial features when people are on testosterone for a while i mean i think it could just you know because when when you're taking testosterone or when your, your testosterone is surging during puberty this is what makes men males have the face that they have. It makes your jaw more square. It makes your sort of brow ridge go out more. Your eyes are more set back. And these are the things we associate with uh, male faces. So I guess it could be just a furthering of, uh, you know, an exaggeration of these features that we tend to associate with, with being male. Although, you know, a lot of these times your, your growth plates are fused already at this point in your life. So there might be, something else going on. I know it affects your skin in a big way. It affects the way the fat's distri distributed in your body. Um, it could be doing something. And, and it's usually not just pure testosterone. These are synthetic. People are taking other stuff too when they're just juicing. So, you know, it could be a well, whole host of things. Isn't there something with the fingers too is uh, indicative of uh, indicative of testosterone, the uh, the length of certain fingers, or is that some yeah. wives tale that have, has made it? No, it's, head? it's, it's true. So during in utero, during development, um, you know, it's also not perfect, but the, there's a dose response between like your, your, what is it? The third and fourth digit ratio. Um, mm -hmm. and I can't remember which way it goes if there's further apart. I think the closer that they are together, the uh, more testosterone you've likely had in, in utero. So men tend to have digit ratios where their third and fourth digit are, um, more closely, uh, the same size where females, their fourth digit, I believe is shorter considerably shorter than their third digit. Um, but when you look at, you know, females that have had uh, like polycystic ovary syndrome where they've, they're, they're have higher levels of testosterone, they tend to have more male typical, their hands are shifted towards uh, sort of more male typical appearance. And also, I mean, people don't like to say it, it's always, you know, super controversial, but uh, lesbians, they uh, tend to have hands that are indicative of uh, early androgen exposure. And we also know for a fact that er exposure to androgens, testosterone early on, uh, is highly predictive of uh, uh, of what we call, um, well, attraction to women, uh, attract attraction to females. So androgenized females tend to be uh, lesbian uh, more frequently. Uh, and and yeah, so it's, it's extremely powerful for sexuality, at least in females.